Hi, my buddies, Dave here, and right now I'm geeking out over the thrilling adventure hour. Dave's Obsession! Dave's Obsession of the Homo Moment! If you're a podcast fan, odds are you know about the thrilling adventure hour, the beloved anthology of hilarious old fashioned radio serials from the minds of two geniuses whose honest to God real names are Ben Acker and Ben Blacker, starring all of your favorite TV actors and pretty much everyone else in the LA comedy scene. What started as a shoestring monthly live show where the actors held the scripts on stage has exploded into a mini-media empire of podcasts, comic books, live tours, a concert film, hopefully an upcoming TV adaptation if there's any justice in the world, and a fan base that spans the entire globe. And there are so many things I could talk about within the whole thrilling adventure empire. I could discuss the surprisingly gripping ongoing narrative and emotional character complexity of Sparks Nevada Marshall on Mars. I could talk about Frank and Sadie Doyle's beautiful love for each other and their hilarious disdain for everything else that isn't alcohol. I could talk once again about fun with establishing rigid formulas and unexpectedly veering away from them in Captain Laserbeam. I could talk about Banjo and Gummy and Colonel TikTok and Amelia Earhart and Desdemona Hughes and Jefferson Reed and the Algonquin Four and... I probably will talk about all those things in the future, but for my first look at the Work Juice world, I wanted to discuss what I find to be one of the most underrated aspects of the series, the advertisements. Not the actual podcast ads, although those can be entertaining too, especially when Todd Cooper handles them. No, I'm talking about the fake radio commercials. This episode is a joint venture of the Work Juice Corporation and Patriot brand cigarettes. The commercials are the part of the thrilling adventure hour that most accurately replicate the old-time radio aesthetic. I spent more of my childhood listening to recordings from the golden age of radio than someone my age theoretically should, and the two most common themes in the advertising of the day were patriotic propaganda and cigarettes. The Thrilling Adventure Hour combines those both into one neat carcinogenic package. Why, who's that handsome fellow smoking a Patriot Battle cigarette? It's like smoking the American flag. <laughs> These days, of course, we tend to be more skeptical of both jingoism and big tobacco, so the Thrilling Adventure Hour uses Patriot brand cigarettes to poke fun at some outdated values. When Adams, Washington, and I got together to found big tobacco, <laughs> we vowed that Patriot brand cigarettes would be as better than all other cigarettes as America is than all other nations. The in-universe advertising for Patriot brand cigarettes manipulates the consumer by conflating their love of their country and their freedom with their love of their smokes. Mr. Franklin! Mr. Franklin! What'd you check when you gave that constitution a once over? Well, I made sure it has all the same qualities I look for in a Patriot brand cigarette. Claiming endorsement from the Founding Fathers is a recurring motif in the Patriot brand. So smoke the smoke, smoke by Uncle Sam. Pledge your allegiance to Patriot brand. But it's not all about outdated politics. Sometimes it's about making politics completely apolitical. It was my first day on the Supreme Court, and I was really nervous. It took forever to find my chambers, my robe didn't fit right, and I didn't know when to call order in the court. Order, order in, in the court! court. Order in... You got it! Oh, I wish I'd never left the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals until I took out a pack of Patriot brand cigarettes. I wasn't even thinking about it. I just wanted something to go right. And of course, in keeping with another trend found in advertising in the wake of the Great Depression, Patriot brand cigarettes was sure to appeal to the audience's ego and their desire to appear classy and wealthy through conspicuous consumption. The only cigarette I ever hold in my cigarette holder is the cigarette as famous and glamorous as this voice, this smile, this adorable little nose. <laughs> I only smoke the cigarettes as famous and glamorous as I am. Patriot brand elites, the only cigarette packaged in Tiffany's blue box. Acker and Blacker have said that they never really did much in the way of researching actual classic radio shows, and yet it's almost shocking how little they had to exaggerate the advertising of the time to make it absurd. There's something different about you, Pete. 
You get a haircut? No. Them new trousers there on your legs? Gosh, no. You get a new haircut? No. <laughs> Why, the only thing different about me is I'm smoking a new kind of cigarettes from the Patriot brand line of cigarettes. But there's another fake sponsor, the one that gives the ensemble its name, Work Juice Coffee. What brings America with each new morn? A steaming cup of rice and shine. What Right, commercials for coffee and cigarettes, like a regular old-fashioned capitalist Jim Jarmusch. And the work juice ads play up the need for coffee with a cavalcade of disgruntled people with crippling caffeine addictions. A breakfast just isn't a breakfast without work juice brand coffee and coffee-related products. Oh, we forgot work juice. Uh, sorry. Sorry doesn't cut it. You're done. <laughs> done? Pack up, get out, both of you. Ms. Mendelssohn. <laughs> oh, Mom, you had us going. Look at my face. Get out. Like any good ad campaign, Work Juice has a mascot, the King of Coffee, played by noted King Hat expert Paul F. Tompkins. In true commercial fashion, the King of Coffee visits average Joes who just can't get by in life without the best coffee. And the idea sounds whimsical, but... His Highness takes his royal duties rather seriously. Probably a bit too seriously. Address me as your Highness when you address me, and do not address me except upon my invitation, and this is an invitation that shan't ever arrive! <laughs> and one of the everyday average Joes the King would visit is Dan Bucatino of Bucatino Business, played by Greendale's favorite police officer, Craig Kakowski. Dan Bucatino's work juice ads feature him trying to advertise Bucatino Business. Fake commercials within fake commercials? How deep does this thing go, man? Bucatino Business, a business where business gets done for you. Dan Bucatino is a simple man who just can't seem to catch a break. Like, ever. Like, even when the king stops visiting him, his life is just one continuous downward spiral. And I am pleased that I have gotten over my headaches and tummy hurts vis-a-vis -vis coffee. <laughs> Turns out it is a different issue entirely. A more serious issue. The greatest friend a man can have is work juice brand coffee. It is dependable and will not sleep with anyone to whom it is not married. Poor Dan Bucatino faces constant heartbreak and betrayal as this fake commercial and a fake radio show becomes a more compelling drama than some actual television shows. Let me just say that there was recently an ad whereby I talked about my brother Connie Bucatino being a good guy deserving of an ocean cruise, and my wife, who prefers her name not be named in these ads, being a less than ideal wife. What nobody told me was Connie's cruise was funded by money that doesn't belong to him so much as it belongs to the Bocatino business. And my wife's betrayals were of the temperature of her calling the police about it, and what I thought was her disrupting some Bocatino business, family business, was in fact her trying to save the Bocatino business. Business, business. <laughs> so, that happened. Um, <laughs> she and I have trust stuff up the duff to work out. And as for my brother, I ain't got no brother. <laughs> I only got my family. And I got work juice, brand coffee. When you're at home, make sure at work so hard you can barely bear it. Work juice makes it all a little easier. How is it that the coffee commercials are so much more depressing than the cigarette commercials? I don't even know how this is an ad for coffee, you know? <laughs> and despite his increasingly difficult life, Dan Bucatino still has to put on a good face and advertise his business so that work juice can advertise their business. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Work Juice Brand Coffee and the programs sponsored by Work Juice Brand Coffee, such as this one, The Thrilling Adventure Hour, are fit for a king. 
of copy. Of course, the commercials are just one teeny tiny piece of the thrilling adventure hour, but the Work Juice team knows how to make even the smallest detail entertaining. And I'll discuss some of the other segments in the future, but for now, what's your favorite segment of the Thrilling Adventure Hour? Let me know in the comments, and until next time, this is Dave, signing off. Oh,